And now to the amazing world of sports. Super Eagles interim coach Austin Aguavo says its interim did not deserve to lose against Tunisia in the 2021 Africa Cup of Nations round of 16 game. Nigeria crushed out of the AFCON yesterday in Garoua, Cameroon after a 0-1 loss to Tunisia. The North Africans now advance to the competition quarterfinals that will take place on the Stallions of Burkina Faso on the same pitch in Garoua. Eguavon, while speaking at the post-match press conference, blamed bad officiating for his team's ouster from the 2021 Af AFCON in Cameroon. The Super Eagles will now look forward to 2022 FIFA World Cup again, a uh, zone playoff in March against Ghana. Wallace Court, Head of Sports Plus TV Africa, joins uh, the conversation this morning. Uh, Wallace, good to have you join us on the news. Uh, so the Super Eagles have actually fallen out. Was it a question of IGG? I disagree with you. Um, um, IGG, no. Um, they're a very good team, fantastic team. Um, the North Africans have, have always been technical. Um, I, hate, I hate to disagree with Eguavoin when he says it was bad officiating. The red card to Iwobi was a red card. He actually had his studs up and his legs actually... People break legs like that. That guy could have broken his leg if he didn't remove his leg quickly. So, yes, that was a red card offence. And um, the officiating was okay for me. Our boys just didn't get their acts together. The, the Tunisians knew what they wanted to come and do. They came to the party well equipped. And um, they knew who to stop and who not to stop. But the summer will be a problem, they stopped him. Um, um, Chukwizi will be a problem, they stopped him. They came to work ready for the match. And we just went there with the belief that, listen, we're the favourites for the team. And on a lighter note, I have this funny feeling Nigeria went to the Nations Cup just to play Egypt. The only match I saw them play really, really well was against Egypt because of Mo Salah. After that, against other teams, it was like they were actually struggling, but they were lesser teams. Tunisia came in technically ready knew what they wanted to come and do, knew what Nigeria could do, didn't take us for granted, came with respect for us, and they won us. So, uh, so at this point, what, what would you say uh, and where did you see that we got it wrong? Nothing really. I think we're not just technically as good as they were. We're a better team, yes, but we're not technically as good. We didn't come to work um, as um, prepared as they were. And um, I think um, Eguavoin made some mistakes too. For example, I would have used Moses Simon as a super sub in that game and not him bring him in from the beginning of the match. Um, bringing him will be in then when he brought him in was a little too little, a little too small at a point. So I think everything went wrong. We're not technically, we, we didn't come to the party. We just came to the party underrating Tunisia, considering that the Tunisian team had COVID problems just before our match. So most of their first team players weren't even in this team. So we took a lot of things for granted, went in there and feeling like um, we're superstars. Everybody say Nigeria will win the Nations Cup this time around and we took them for granted. Simple. Mm. Some persons also mentioned the fact that you could actually predict the move of the Super Eagles at every point in time and you could see the close marking with Moses Simon at a time where uh, all of that, at some point, some persons were expecting that we probably would have had an Alex Iwobi being introduced just to cause that distraction. Exactly. That's where um, the technical abilities didn't come to play. Everybody in that Nations Cup knows that I, um, Moses Simon will be the problem of any defense. And so they locked him down. Simple. Bring and it will be in as early as possible to distract them. So while Moses Simon is doing his thing, Ubisu is doing his thing too, but he brought in it will be 
He listens too late, and then he will be unfortunately goes in there, tries to make a, an impression, gets a red card, and of course the game was over. So, so let's just look at this. It probably might just be on a lighter note. Now, some the internet has been buzzing. Of course, Twitter has been lifted the ban on Twitter. Some people say that because the president spoke with the players, uh, this probably would have not given them. I really don't know how that uh, you know makes any sense or makes any different how that affects it. But that's the thoughts on Twitter. Some people say the president would have put up that call across. Maybe it wasn't a good motivation for the players. I think every 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 president, every leader would then want to motivate his players at that point in time, going into the match against Tunisia. And the president did the right thing by actually calling them to try to motivate them. If it wasn't even enough motivation, I, I'm not a psychologist, I, won't, I don't know that. <laughs> but why not for one that I think um, every president would call this team. Macron would call the Le Bleu when, before a critical match. Um, and the, the Queen or Boris Johnson would call the Three Lions before a big, big match. So I think every leader would call their team, whether it's rugby, whether it's basketball, whether it's football, to motivate them. Our president did what every other leader would have done. Try and motivate them when it didn't work. Yeah. Okay, so moving forward now, what do you think would be the fate of the interim coach talking about S uh, Austin Eguavon at this point? I don't think Austin Eguavon um, has been able to lock down the job. Even if he didn't win the Nations Cup, getting to the quarterfinals or semifinals at least would have actually cemented the job for him. Crashing out now, and we, are, we actually see his um, technical deficiencies. He has a lot of them. And you can imagine an Eguavon who can't beat a Tunisia who were depleted by coronavirus in an African Nations Cup match, taking us to the World Cup, where it's going to meet teams like France, Germany, England. But, 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 you, have been a a, but you have been a strong advocate of, you know, Austin Guavon and uh, so much faith. You yes, he, 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 he came into the, to, to the Nations Cup with um, a lot of um, flair. The way Nigeria used to play in the past, that came into the play again, and he showed in our game. But um, this, this match only proved that um, he's not a world-class coach yet. And um, even if he plays against Ghana in the World Cup qualifiers, when we get to the World Cup, with these technical deficiencies, it will be a total disaster for so, Nigeria. So we'll total. be looking out for a world-class coach then? We, we already have a Pesero, who obviously is not a world-class coach, but we'll manage what we have. At least we're hoping that Pesero, who is a, 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 a foreigner, an expatriate, and who has um, coached abroad for a while, might be better than Eguavon when we get to the world stage, the World Cup. Thank you so much for coming, Wally Thank Scott. You, we appreciate your time this Thank morning. You. Hello. Hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.